For the first time in four years, Paris Saint-Germain's monopoly over French football is under threat. With 10 games to play, they trail Lille in Ligue 1. What's more, Lyon and Monaco are hot on their tails. Never before in the era of Qatari ownership at PSG has Le Championnat been so hotly contested. And it all comes against the backdrop of COVID-19 and a looming financial disaster that threatens the very fabric of the French domestic game. So what has happened to PSG and how have their rivals managed to improve? And more importantly, could this be the new status quo in France? Let's find out. Over the past year, French football has teetered on the edge of financial disaster thanks to the global pandemic and a catalogue of poor decisions. In 2018, Ligue de Football Professionnel struck a deal with Spanish multimedia communications company MediaPro that was meant to transform the fortunes of French clubs. MediaPro agreed to pay 3.25 billion euros for Ligue 1 and Der rights over the next four years, smashing their previous deal with Canal+. Plus. This was hailed as a great step towards closing the gap on the Premier League and La Liga, but in reality, it was doomed from the start. In order to turn a profit, MediaPro needed 4 million customers to join their Telefoot subscriber platform which would show the games. By November 2020, they had only achieved 15% of that target. This poor return combined with decimated cash reserves from the pandemic left them desperate to renegotiate terms with the OFP. However, by this point, the MediaPro money had become a lifeline for French sides suffering from empty stadiums, a stagnant transfer market, an inflated budget set against the prospect of the new deal. Yet by October, MediaPro had stopped paying instalments to the LFP, plunging clubs across the country into crisis. Even with a new cut price TV deal, Paris based news outfit Agence France Presse estimates that losses for Ligue 1 clubs as a whole will exceed 1.3 billion euros this season. Already, clubs in Ligue 2, like Troyes and Toulouse, have succumbed to foreign ownership, while Lille's majority shareholder Gerard Lopez was forced to sell up. In February, Marseille president Jacques-Henri Rowe described Ligue 1 as no longer sustainable. A big question mark loomed over how PSG could cope in the storm, even with their Qatari fortune. The answer is not well. Club president Nasser al Khalifi revealed to RMC Sport back in April they would face colossal losses predicted to be around 300 million euros for 2021, and that can be directly felt in the Prisian's business last summer. On the surface, the permanent signing of Mario Accardi for 50 million euros suggested it was business as usual. The initial clause for the Argentine forward has stood at 70 million euros. Inter happy to slash their prices in order to make a sale with financial uncertainty sweeping the European game. Beyond Accardi, their only other business consisted of loan signings and permanent deals at a net spend of 11 million euros. Meanwhile, a host of young and established names like Edison Cavani, Adil Alshish and Thiago Silva all left for free. What was left was a squad arguably weaker than before and exhausted from their Champions League exploits. If PSG could ever be caught, now was the time. On December 29th, Thomas Tuchel was fired by PSG. Together they had won six trophies in two and a half years, including two league on titles and a domestic quadruple. He holds the best win percentage of any manager in French top flight history and came agonizingly close to claiming the Champions League last August. The decision appeared incredibly harsh, and it was the first time in a decade the club had switched managers mid-season. But scratch a little deeper, and all was not well with Les Rouges Bleus. A nightmare start to the campaign saw consecutive defeats to Lens and Marseille, eight straight wins followed, but losses to Monaco and Lyon soured the mood once more. By December 29th, they sat third in Ligue 1, having dropped more points than they had across the entirety of the previous campaign. Things were equally turbulent in the Champions League after defeats against Manchester United and RB Leipzig. A famous victory at Old Trafford may have boosted their last 16 hopes, but Al Khalifi's public failure to credit Tuchel for the success hinted at bubbling tensions behind the scenes. Previously, the president hadn't shied away from labelling the 47-year-old as the best coach in the world. But arguably Tuchel's biggest adversary was the club's sporting director, Leonardo. Hired by his predecessor, Antero Enrique, Tuchel had never been Leonardo's choice, and problems often emerged in their loose alliance, particularly over player transfers. According to ESPN, last summer Tuchel wanted a new centre-half, with Chelsea's Antonio Rudiger his top target. Leonardo got him Danilo Pereira, defensive midfielder from FC Porto. In what was considered a petulant act of protest, Pereira was played out of position at the back. 
Tuchel often aired his concerns in the press, accelerating their collision course. In October, Leonardo made his anger clear by telling the media his manager's comments and attitude were damaging for the club. If the former Dortmund boss wanted a war, it was one he could never win. Tensions weren't just confined to the boardroom either. There was a feeling the Parisians were losing their way towards the end of the Germans' reign. According to RMC, Tuchel's persistent use of Marquinhos in central midfield raised eyebrows, along with his lack of a relationship with Icardi. And then there was his tactical over-reliance on Neymar and Kylian Mbappe in attack, which neglected the rest of their expensively constructed side. What's more, his star duo often had to bail Tuchel out with individual moments of brilliance. Another player painting over the growing cracks at the Parc des Princes was their keeper, Kaylor Navas. The Costa Rican has put up some heroic performances this season, maintaining an 83% save rate and statistically preventing 4.9 more goals than he should. In Tuchel's defence, an almost non-existent pre-season plus a wave of Covid cases hugely depleted his squad. Neymar has once again been missing with injury, while by Christmas PSG had used 31 players. Only Saint-Étienne had utilised more. But it was also clear he was growing tired of life in Paris, and the extensive demands that came with managing the French giants. In one interview, Tuchel infamously likened working for PSG to being a sports politician rather than a coach. Once again, this didn't go down well with Leonardo. So for all the success, few tears were shed when Tuchel was fired. Rumblings of discontent had spilled over into negative performances on and off the pitch, and change was needed. But has his replacement, Maurizio Pochettino, turned things around? On February 21st, a damaging statistic revealed that defeats to Lorient and Monaco meant after nine games the former Tottenham coach had made the worst start of any PSG manager in the Qatari era. They may have crushed Barcelona at the new Camp, but domestically little has changed under the Argentine. PSG still score and concede at roughly the same rate as they did under Tuchel, and struggle to kill off their opponents in their normally ruthless fashion. And with widespread injuries in the squad, Pochettino still hasn't found his best lineup, or had time to improve things on the training ground. PSG's star-studded outfit are enjoying a rare season of turbulence, and their rivals know it. Under Christophe Gautier, Lille have amassed a hugely exciting squad boosted by smart investments in youth and experience. Le Dog are no strangers to being raided for their assets, having received €320 million Euros in player sales during the past three seasons alone. Selling is fundamental to their survival, and last summer saw Victor Ozimen and Gabriel both depart. But while their competitors slashed their prices, Lille still managed to charge a premium, collecting €96 million Euros for the pair. Around €40 million Euros was then reinvested in the side, capturing Jonathan David from Ghent and Sven Botman from Ajax. Botman has proven an upgrade on Gabriel, while David has recovered from a slow start to become the club's joint top scorer. He shares that mantle with 35-year-old veteran Baruch Yilmaz, a surprise success story having joined on a free transfer from Besiktas. Alongside the 37-year-old Jose Font and the relentless Benjamin Andre, Lille have a stable core around which their young talent can thrive and could be set for their first title in a decade. Leon also worked wonders in the market last summer. The decision to curtail Lee Gunn had meant Le Gunn missed out on European competition completely, much to the horror of President Jean-Michel Hulard, who claimed it would cost his side 80 million euros. Sure enough, they were forced to sell in order to cover their losses. But the lack of a European distraction has ironically aided Rudy Garcia's outfit domestically. And crucially, they managed to hold on to their prize assets, Hussam Alwa and Memphis Depay, with the latter trading just Mbappe for goals scored this term. New additions in Carl Toko Ekambi and AC Milan flop Lucas Baqueta have all hit the ground running too. Even Monaco have thrown their hat into the ring, with a blistering run of 9 wins from 11 games in 2021 under the guise of former Bayern Munich coach Niko Kovac. So while PSG languished under the dark financial cloud, their rivals managed to improve remaining stable and focused while the Parisians changed management. But don't expect this to become the norm. Depay has already made it clear he will be leaving Lyon when his contract expires this summer, and Awa could follow, leaving Ula with another rebuilding job on his hands. For Lille, the situation is even more complicated. The club's finances were in a dire state even before the pandemic, having lost €205 million Euros between 2018 and 2020. High wages and a failure to sell out the stadium meant they were spending €1.20 Euro for every €1 Euro they earned. Combined with the current state of affairs, they will almost inevitably be forced to sell once more, and rest their success in future transfers. Even winning Lee Gunn won't solve their problems. 
PSG won't face the same financial pressures, and the last time they failed to win Le Championnat, they responded by smashing the world transfer record to sign Neymar. Don't bet against them providing Pochettino tools to wrestle back control over French football once more. And that's all we have time for today, but if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like and leave a comment. This video was researched and written by Henry Hill, and narrated and edited by myself, Danny Pape. For more daily content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.